welcome back to our channel. So today we are sharing our birth plan. When's the last time you've been in a video? Um, uh, last time we did a video like this? I don't remember. I feel like I've the one who's been like posting videos. He's been like... Oh, you got a lot going on, obviously. Oh, whatever. Well, <laughs> I think it's important for him to be in this video because a part of our birth plan, he's a part of the birth plan, you know? He's a part of this pregnancy and this whole creation and everything. So he has to be at the delivery, of course. <laughs> so I feel like it's important and for me to show you guys in this video how important your partner is within your birth plan because, you know, he's the one who's going to be supporting you. He's the one who's going to yeah. be, you know, helping you for relief and things like that. So Get from point A to B. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he's the driver. <laughs> He's important, so this is why I really wanted him to be in the video so he can explain like his point of view about things that we learned so far and things that we're going to do. So a little disclaimer, you know, birth plans, some people write birth plans, some people don't. Um, for me, um, I not that I've written it down, but I know what I'm going to do. And of course, birth plans never go as planned. You know what you want to do. You know what we, yeah, I know what I want to do, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to happen. Yeah. I feel like you always have to be prepared for any type of option. Mm. So we're sharing with you guys like what we want to do, but of course, whatever God has yeah, in his ready, plans, yeah. you know, just you just have to be ready. So to start with, I am planning on doing an unmedicated birth. Now with Mackenzie, I did have an epidural, I had a Pitocin and stuff like that. If you guys haven't seen my labor and delivery story with Mackenzie, I'll link that down below. We have like a little sit down and talk about mm -hmm. her delivery. And But I was in labor for 19 hours, probably it was more than that to be mm -hmm. honest. But I was just really uncomfortable. Of course I didn't feel any pain because of the epidural, but also I was like laid out on the bed for 19 hours, couldn't eat, oh, all I had was ice chips, and it was just really annoying and it hurt my back, you know, just laying in bed for that long. And I just knew that next time I just wanted to try no medication at all, although of course it's gonna be painful, but I'd rather deal with the pain, get it over with, than to be laying there waiting. They always say that the second go round, it always goes way faster than the first. I feel like, you know, your first delivery is always like trial and error. You see how you look, what you want. And the second time, you know, you're older. Well, hopefully you're older. I mean, like I'm older, so I feel like I'm not the same person. And like- you've been through it before. So yeah. you know what, what you liked, what you didn't like. And then I can do more research on it and oh, stuff yeah. like that. So I am planning to do an unmedicated birth. One of the first things that I research is obviously looking into a doula. Now I'm sure you guys have seen the articles out that um, a lot of black women are dying from labor and delivery and you know that kind of scared me because that's just like the it's just terrible what's going on within the hospitals and things like that so I originally wanted a doula just to like have our back you know for anything you know because sometimes you know, when you're in labor you don't think clearly and then he's probably like stressed out about you know, who, what's going on with me. A, a doctor is just thinking about money. Yeah. Of course, like, that sounds bad, but. No, it's just the, the doctor works for the hospital and the doula works for you. So yeah. they're gonna do what's best for you in the in the baby. And when you're in labor and it's in the thick of the moment, like, you kind of making decisions, like, fast. So mm -hmm. having someone there that's in that world, like a doula who works for you and mm -hmm. you've been meeting with them and getting to know them throughout this whole process, when you get to the time, if you have to make any type of decisions, like they'll be there to support you. So mm -hmm. it's, it's pretty important. And with a doula, you know, they're not gonna make the decision for us, but at least we have that support and she can further explain things. The doula that we chose, she's done over like 700 births. In order to find a doula, you can always ask your doctor or your hospital and stuff like that to see if they have any recommendations. Now, of course, doulas, I don't, they're not covered by insurance, right? They're not covered by insurance. So we did have to pay out of pocket for that, but of course they have payment plans. So definitely like look into a doula um, ahead of time. Now you can have a doula even if you are doing an epidural, even if mm -hmm. you do have a C-section, like they're there for you, they're there for your support. It's really great to have a doula if you're like a military wife and your husband's not gonna be there. You know, you always wanna have somebody there with you if your family's not there. So a doula is perfect. Um, but like I said, it is out of pocket, but it's gonna be definitely be worth it because like, I, like he said, they're working for you and you just have that extra support. So when we met with our doula, we explained to her what 
what kind of delivery we want. We want, you know, natural birth. At the time, I was we were planning on delivering at another hospital, and she suggested us to not deliver at that hospital only because they have high C-section rates. Now, I never thought about that. Just look into like mm -hmm. um, about C-section rates at hospitals and stuff like that. A lot of doctors they automatically recommend a C-section if the baby may be in a certain position and. Um, not kind of ready to be pushed yet, not in pushing position. So the hospital she recommended us to go to, they, they don't recommend a C-section right away, but they'll, you know, with, especially with the help of a doula, you can get in different positions, you can kind of change your, the way that you're laying down or do something that can help the baby move into a better position to get you in the labor, what was it, in the pushing position, I guess? <laughs> the baby in the position for you to push. And also what we also learned is that doctors are like so pushy about C-section because they get paid more money when they do a C-section because it's considered a surgery. So like, you know, at this hospital, they'll be like, oh, you know, it's not going well, let's just do a C-section. And like, of course, that's not what you want to hear when you've been like, you know, preparing yourself for a natural labor. So definitely, you know, find a hospital that is natural birth friendly mm -hmm. and that you know the doctors or the midwives there are going to support you and not just tell you you know all right you need a c-section we decided to switch hospitals switch doctors and now we're going to give birth at a midwifery center it's kind of cool because it's half midwifery center and the other half is a hospital so god forbid anything happens in the midwifery room they can always like wheel me to the labor and delivery side where they have you know all the medications and everything like that so it's not far at all it's literally like down the hall so i don't have to worry about you know getting in the ambulance or anything like that so everything is there the midwifery center is like close to giving birth to home that you will get and I'm not one for giving birth at home. I know she kind of talked that about it. That was my point, original plan was to give birth at home. But my whole thing is exactly what you just said. If if anything goes wrong, if anything there's an emergency, you don't want to have the emergency going down in the living room. You would rather be able to go down the hall to an actual, you know, labor and delivery hospital where they have the things that you need. You no, know, it's right there they can get it versus you being in the living room and all we got is stuff that's at home oh my gosh. but i originally really wanted a water birth you know at home um but obviously he didn't feel no. comfortable with that no, so not at all we reasoned <laughs> and we found this move with free center so i think we're it's close it's similar it, yeah it's very similar so the cool thing about midwife free centers are that they're bigger then labor and delivery room. They're pretty spacious. Like right when you walk in, there's like a huge birthing tub. It's a queen size bed. Is it queen or full? Uh, I think it's queen. It has a, a fridge, has like a little a dine, dining table. Yeah. You have like a bathroom, you know, the shower. And microwave. Microwave. Like it's like kind of, very, it's very homey. So you feel more comfortable there. And plus you have more space to like actual labor in. So I really like that because you know, when I, when I'm in labor, I can like labor in the shower, I can labor in the birthing tub, so, and I can also deliver in the birthing tub if I feel like it, or if, you know, if the timing is right and things like that. The thing with our midwifery center is that there were requirements. So one of the things that you can't have a high risk pregnancy, so they only take women who are low risk, you know, no issues, everything went well with like their first pregnancies and or you know everything is going well health wise. Another thing is that you have to keep a food log, although they never really checked it, but I have been keeping a food log. <laughs> Someone's up from their nap. So you have to keep a food log and what else you have to do? Oh, it was certain like the weight that you could gain or something. It was, is it? Yeah, and you couldn't exceed a certain amount. Basically you just have to stay healthy, um, exercise and then we also had to take a class like a birthing class mm -hmm. and also they have their own class called a third trimester class when they basically tell you like how to prepare for you know the last weeks of pregnancy and who to call when it's time and when it's time and all those other stuff so with the birthing class we actually took it with our doula our doula does classes as well and you know that that's also another separate cost but with this class, it's called, it was, what was it? Refresher class. Yeah, it was a refresher class. So she does classes for first time moms, but this time it's for a refresher class because we already had 
Mackenzie. So everybody that was in there are, you know, having their second kid, their third kid. And since it's a requirement within the midwifery center, that's why they were there. And I feel like it was really helpful. We never took a birthing class with Mackenzie at all. We just, you know, showed up. <laughs> <laughs> just went with it. Yeah. Well, what are some things you learned? So I learned a lot of stuff in there. The 511 rule is something that, that, stuck, that stuck with me, which is when the contractions start to hit. Because my biggest concern is... You know, having a baby anywhere other than the hospital. In the car. So I, I was asking a lot of questions about just, you know, when should we head to the hospital? You know, when's the right time to go there? Because I do not want to be stuck on the side of the road. Because I can't, I don't know, I'll probably black out. What? That's like... <laughs> So, and the crazy thing is that our <laughs> the hospital that we're going to is like 30 minutes away, and if there's traffic, um, it's not good. So the 511 rule is what I learned for contractions that so uh, it's five minutes apart. They last uh, one, one minute, minute for one hour. You know, when you hit that mark where they last, they're five minutes apart, last one minute for an hour. If you're if you're at that part, then it's you need to be on your way there. You need to be there by then. What do you mean? You can't. And everything that they said, I'm moving it up a little bit. So if they say five minutes apart, I'm thinking more like eight or nine minutes apart. Oh my god! Once there's any type of routine or something that's constant, yeah. that means it's time to go. That's that's my that's my rule of thumb. And I guess it's really because like this hospital is a little bit further with Mackenzie. Or the hospital wasn't like that far. It was probably like 15 minutes oh, yeah. away. But and also this time, since they say like the second delivery goes by really fast, we learned in the class that let's say I'm three centimeters right and I have a contraction and let's say like a first-time mom she could be three centimeters and have a contraction and still stay at three centimeters I can have a contraction and be at three centimeters and have another one right and I'll be like six the baby can easily drop or right. something like that the, the pathway is already carved out by Mackenzie so yeah she did all the hard work it, it, <laughs> but that's what they said the first child always does the hard work and then the second is just like shh, since your body already knows what to do so the baby yeah. can just like so that means get there early <laughs> so that's his biggest concern and like my biggest concern is like you know being in traffic and stuff like that because traffic here is ridiculous like if you're in traffic like what are you gonna do <laughs> Call the cops, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. Well, we gotta think about that. The doula said that if that's like one of your fears and that means it's not gonna happen like during the day. She said most times people, you know, go into labor at nighttime because everyone because it's quiet, you're at you peace, you're relaxed. you're relaxed. So that's when your body is most likely gonna go into labor. So that's what I'm thinking is that I'll probably go into labor at nighttime just like how I did with Mackenzie. The other things that we learned at the at the class since my doula taught it, you know, we learned about um, counter pressures mm -hmm. and like how to relieve, you know, back contractions and things to things that we're gonna bring with us to help relieve some pain. She really explained a lot of different positions too, but that's why we also have her, we're gonna have her in the room too, yeah. to help remind us about that because who knows, like I know with me and you know, pregnancy brain, like I don't remember half the stuff. I don't remember what I did yesterday, so it's kind of like difficult and that's why it's important for your partner to go to these classes too because, you know, they can remember for you when you have that pregnancy brain and of course the doula is there to remind you of everything. And um, also a good thing about a doula is that let's say like he has to go to the bathroom or he has, to, he has a phone call or something like that and I'm having a contraction I need somebody to like, you know, rub my back. She's there to actually help me. So that's why. Team, team effort. Yeah, it's a team effort. So he, she's like our shadows, mm -hmm. basically. She said, if there's anything, if there's anything you want to talk to, either your significant other or your mom or someone that you have, like if y'all have any type of drama or beef or anything, <laughs> you should probably talk about that before you go into labor because once you get into labor, you're gonna be saying stuff that's on, that's the stuff that's deep down and it's gonna start coming out so if you got anything that you need to say say it now so you, why do you always remember that like because you, i think you, it's funny you think i'm gonna like curse you out or something? <laughs> i hate you <laughs> i don't know how i'm gonna be it's it's gonna be interesting it's like i still i still can't believe that i'm going gonna go going, going to go through this process but you know i feel somewhat prepared and i just you know i'm just ready for the baby to get here for real for real so when i'm actually in labor when I'm actually having contractions, I'm gonna, you know, track them on my one of my pregnancy apps. Most pregnancy apps have like a contract, a contraction 
timer. So I'm definitely gonna keep track of that. And then I guess when it's like closer together, more like if it's like, what is it, seven, eight minutes yeah, seven apart. Minutes. When you actually feel like you know it's a real contraction. Yeah, because, you know, it's a difference between, you know, real contraction and Braxton Hicks contraction. I've been having Braxton Hicks contractions all the time, all throughout the day. It's been ridiculous. And they are starting to get a little painful. I know today I had some, like, even back contractions, too. So, I know uh, something's going on, you know, something's happening. With your second pregnancy, you feel all that more and you feel it stronger. So, it's very different. So, I guess when our my contraction gets closer, that's when then it's, like, go time. Now, our midwifery center told us to call within 30 minutes before getting there mm -hmm. just to get the room ready, to get the tub ready. Yeah, they say like 80 gallons of water or something. Yeah, it's like 80 <laughs> gallons of water just to be filled in that birthing tub. So they have to get all that ready and of course someone needs to be there. So let's say it's the middle of the night and no one's, none of the midwives are there. That's why they have to call, we have to call ahead just so they can get there on time. Mm -hmm. So we already live like 30 minutes away and of course uh, the obstacle of this birth plan is getting little Miss McKenzie somewhere. So we're not having her in the birthing room. I know some people do that. I don't think I can <laughs> even relax That's not at a all. Good idea. I don't know. How, for you moms out there who had their kids in the room, like, good for you. I can't. I'll be... <laughs> Out of, I, don't, I can't, I have no words. She cannot be there. So with your second baby, you wanna have a plan A, B, and C just in case. We kinda of have a D too, to think about it. So like our first, our first one is like we're gonna call like his mom and you know, drop her off there. And if she doesn't pick up and depending on what time of day it is, I'm gonna call his grandma. And if she <laughs> is not available, I'm gonna call his best friend. And Luckily, they're all kind of on the way there. Yeah, they literally live in like a triangle, <laughs> like if you think about it. So they all live very close. They're probably like 10 minutes away and on the way to the hospital, which is really good. So we already have her bags packed. And then our option D, if we have to and no one is picking up, <laughs> we will take her and have somebody pick, have her, somebody up. pick her up. So we really don't think that we're going to reach to D. Our A, B, and C are pretty. We're going to... we. We need to have another sit down with them. <laughs> Just and a reminder, because I feel like it's been so long, and as you start getting closer to the end, you gotta remind people, like, you know, it's really. Keep your phone on. Yeah, it's really about to get to the end, so keep your. Sleep lightly. Keep your phone <laughs> on, you know, especially in the middle of the night. If we're calling, it could be the real deal, so mm -hmm. be alert. <laughs> if they're. <laughs> <laughs> He's so serious. So yeah, we definitely have to have another sit down with them just so they can, you know, really listen to us. Like we're really in this home stretch right now. For the most part, I have my hospital bags packed, and I did record a video on everything that's in there. I recorded what's in the baby's bag mine. as well. He didn't pack his yet. He's gonna do that soon, hopefully. But we're keeping everything at the door. I also have another bag of relief. That's what I like to call it, my bag of relief of all the stuff that I'm going to use to help relieve the pain, things that the doula suggested, things that I read about. So definitely check out my what's in the hospital bag video. I'll probably post that tomorrow. So be on the lookout for that so you can see exactly what I'm going to be using to help with the pain and whatever stuff is in my bag. So when I get there with laboring, you know, we're just gonna see how everything goes. I think when you first go in there, you have to go through the emergency room and then they like monitor you for like an hour. Mm -hmm. And then that's- I don't think it's an hour. It's not an hour? No, I think it's 20 minutes. Oh, okay, I don't know. I forgot. We put her on the monitor for 20 minutes, 20 to 30 minutes, and then after that, if everything is, everything is right, then you can be okay. on your own. Now, if you were group B strep, positive then you would have to get some antibiotics when you first get there i am negative thank god so i don't have to do the antibiotics but then we'll go into the room and i think as i said after like each contraction they like monitor the baby's heartbeat right mm -hmm, with a handheld thing with a handheld doppler so that's a big relief too since i'm not going to be connected to anything there's like five different midwives so one of them will deliver the baby another cool thing about be delivery natural is that you can eat you ain't gonna be thinking about no food i don't know how i'm gonna feel so we do have some snacks ready um but i hated that i didn't have that option with mckenzie with you no know, when you have a girl you can't eat 
you know you can't move around all that stuff so I get to move around this time you know do whatever feels comfortable for me I can snack I can eat I can drink you know that's what I really like you you're more you have more freedom it's probably gonna be a more pain but you have more freedom to do what you want to do and what feels comfortable for you so like I said before I do have the option to birth in the tub now the only thing that if you do birth in a tub is that, like after you give birth you like got, you have to you got a couple minutes to get out yeah like you literally have to get out of the and tub and the baby still attached to the milk cord so the placenta is the placenta still, still inside still of you in, so that's like gonna circus yeah that's gonna be interesting <laughs> if that does happen like like i said like if i do i do if i don't i don't it's not like a big deal for me to have like a water birth it'll be cool it's cool. be cool to deliver inside the tub but we're gonna see how I feel. It's all about me feeling comfortable and where I'm gonna give birth. I know for the most part I'm not going to deliver on my back how that's like the normal way mm. to give birth but that is not a normal way to give birth if you think about it. Cause what did it say? If you had to poop? Yeah, you're not gonna go lay on your back to push. Yeah, if you have to poop, <laughs> like are you gonna like lay on your back to push poop out? Like no, you're gonna squat. So like it's really recommended to squat when you giving birth and yeah. you know there's other birthing positions and stuff like that so you know that's gonna be my main thing to actually have gravity let the baby come down and push correctly and not on my back yeah. that's really uncomfortable I don't know how that came about <laughs> I don't how know. it went from people squatting to laying on your back to, I don't know I don't know yet. if I do give birth in the tub and then once I get out the tub then they're gonna put me on the bed and then that's when I deliver the placenta. Mm. Now I am doing placenta encapsulation. I know a lot of people have things to say about it. You know, some, think, some people think it's nasty. Some people think <laughs> the placenta is like worthless afterwards. And some doctors even like discourage it too, uh. which is, you know, very sad. And like, you don't want a doctor that's gonna like discourage like what your birth plan is. Although like they always say like, placenta encapsulation there's no like real research on it but there is a lot of benefits with placenta encapsulation such as like it boosts your energy your mood um, it decreases your chances of getting postpartum depression and also increases your milk supply and that's just some of the things oh, yeah. and like what the placenta is is like it's an organ that's literally like supplying all the nutrients and vitamins to your baby like that's your baby's food supply oh, yeah. so just imagine like what exactly is in there like there it's is a powerful, lot of I'm yeah sure. if you ask a doctor about you know keeping your placenta or acting the benefits you know you're either gonna get some doctors are gonna say it's good, some doctors are gonna be like, oh, it's just an organ, just throw it away. You know, mm -hmm. that's what they supposedly do with it. Which in the organs like have so much DNA, so much nutrients, just things in there that are that could be helpful and you know, look up the story of Henrietta Lacks that where they took some things from her unwillingly, so unlawfully. So uh, they took some things from her that that kinda look up the story. So with the placenta encapsulation, we have to have the placenta out of the hospital within four hours. I don't know exactly <laughs> why they say four hours, but either way, I mean, they're all for it. The midwifery center is like, you know, they're used to it, to keeping that. So um, we have to bring a cooler and some freezer bags. So the cool thing about this midwifery center, they're like, once you deliver, they require skin to skin to skin for one hour which is really nice you know most times when you um, give birth they like cut the cord right away and take the baby and wash the baby and, like you know you know weigh the baby and do all this extra stuff so like you kind of like miss out on like that bonding experience but once I deliver they're actually going to do the cord delay so they're gonna wait until the cord stops pulsing and then have the cord cut and that's when the baby will be skin to skin like bloody anything whatever they have the baby comes out in like the baby is gonna be on me and it's called like the golden hour that's what they call it right mm, or something like that I don't know and that's the time for me and the baby to bond skin to skin to warm the baby up and just so to calm the baby down when, when it's crying and things like that was really special to me that the hospital is for that and not just a typical hospital that you just take the baby and do whatever they have mm -hmm. to do so after that hour is up that's when they're gonna weigh the baby and do all that extra stuff like that so that's when I'll be able to breastfeed and hopefully everything goes fine with that but that's basically our entire <laughs> birth plan and like I said you know disclaimer, you nothing like this. <laughs> I know. sounds perfect right <laughs> so another disclaimer like I'm preparing myself if 
God forbid anything happens, let's say I'm like too in distress or something like that and I need the epidural, like sometimes you might need an epidural just to give your body a rest because it's not going to be able to physically push the baby out. So sometimes you might need an epidural. I'm not completely against epidural. I, I If I absolutely need it, then it'll be fine. But you know, for right now, like, you know, I don't want to do one. Let's say like, God forbid, like I have to have a C-section, you know, like, if I do end up with a C-section, then that's it. You know, like, I can't predict how cruise is going to be. I can't predict, like, how my body is going to be and how my body is going to take the pain. And how there's going to be a moment, they always say there's going to be a moment that you're going to want to give up. And that's usually the moment when it's, like, almost right there. You want to have, like, some positive inf affirmations. That's your thing, some right? Some positive affirmations, yeah. yeah. Keep your energy in, in line. Yeah. So, you know... What's, what my thinking is, is that I'm more scared of the epidural than natural birth because I hate needles. I, I was terrified to even get the epidural to begin with. Like he was, I was, he was there when I got the epidural with Mackenzie. So like that's my biggest fear because I'm scared to, you know, move with the epidural and then get paralyzed, you know? So that's my big thing. And also what I'm thinking is like each contraction I have, I'm one step closer to meeting my baby. Although it's gonna be painful, I just know like, okay, this contraction is done. You have one, one minute to rest. Now, let me prepare myself for the next one. I'll be closer to meeting baby Cruz. So like, that's me being positive. And of course, there's gonna be a time probably when I'm like over it, but this is this is how my thought process is gonna be. It's yeah. like a boxing match. You go in your yeah. corner, and get yourself ready, go back out there for your contraction. Go take it, take your contraction, you know, meet it head on, take mm -hmm. it, breathe, stay calm, relax, try to stay calm, as calm and relaxed as possible. Down when it's over, okay, that one's over. Go, relax, right? Go and then relax. you go back and, and you get your go water. In. Go back, get some water, put, probably have a fan going, blowing stuff over you. Uh -huh. Got a nice cold rag, you know, then you gotta go back out again. I feel like for me, yeah, just thinking, you know, 19 hours versus like that's just attack it head on, head on, and it'll definitely cut that time and way, that. way, way down. So hopefully hopefully and you gotta be prepared you know for anything you just gotta be really flexible but just mm -hmm. go in there with a plan but yeah. and be open-minded about everything yeah. too so if, you know i feel That's like right. <laughs> i feel like so many people like you know think about okay i want this natural i want this way i don't want this way like it has to be perfect or like my life is over i know so many people like cry and are devastated that you know their birth plan didn't go as planned but like what, what's important about birth plans is that you have to be open about everything too because you never know i don't know when it's gonna happen i don't know how it's gonna happen i don't know how i'm gonna feel like you're literally yeah. clueless and that's one thing that like gives me anxiety kind of because just like oh my gosh like you're literally just waiting here just waiting for Mm -hmm. Waiting to feel contractions, waiting for it to happen, and you know, you just, of course, it's going to happen. Yeah, you just know it's going to happen soon, sometime soon. So, hopefully, you guys enjoyed our birth plan video. If you have any other tips or suggestions about um, natural birth, just leave a comment down below. Yeah. If you have any questions about anything, leave a comment That's down below. Fun. Give this video a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe because yeah, we still yeah. have a lot of pregnancy related videos. Coming up within the last three weeks of pregnancy, I have everything in my planner. I got uh, some good videos coming up, so. About to get crazy. Yeah. So. And of course, you'll notice if we stop posting, that. probably we had the baby. <laughs> <laughs> you can follow me on my personal Instagram at AstraSteen. I always have pregnancy updates on there, just when I post whatever. More updates than here on YouTube. Comment down below and subscribe. Bye. And ring that bell button. Ring that bell. Mommy and Daddy out. Oh, Bye. Nice.